also joined by the legend that is Lee Chappie. Sir, how are you? Cheers for having me on. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. And uh, I've got to say one thing before we start. Happy birthday, Jamie Vardy. He's 34 today. So, WKD uh, is... Uh, out to the window, John. We're what, 30 seconds in? WKD, straight down the hatch. <laughs> Love that. Come on, oh, is he going for it? Again. Oh, no way. Oh, man. <laughs> I've never seen somebody drink breast milk that quickly before. <laughs> Boom. Wow. Jesus. Oh, oh, we're in for it tonight, folks. 114 Whoa. goals, 227 games, 2015 16 champion. More goals than Ronaldo, Drogba, Torres, Lukaku, Suarez, Burkamp. Scored 11 straight games, broke the record. 2019 20 Golden Boot. Oldest man to do it, Jamie Fecking Vardy. Joe, how are you, mate? Are you all right, Joe? How are you eating yourself? Let's just ignore this drunken fucker. <laughs> <know, the> <laughs> I was just going to say to Lee, what Joe's talking about there, I, I've noticed something from Frank Lampard this week. He came out in the media, and this is the sign to me of him being under pressure, and said mm. that he has Roman Abramovich to thank for his career, <laughs> basically. And when you see that type of stuff, as Lee touched on there, or excuse me, as Joe touched on earlier on, about that sense of entitlement, the fact he's a legend at Chelsea, do you think that he'll see the season out, Lee? That's I think that's what I think I spoke about this uh, on a on an, another show not long ago. Um, the the pressure's on. The amount of money you spent, the pressure is on to to succeed, uh, and the fans' expectations will be skyrocketing as well. If look at the end of the day, if Liverpool spent two hundred twenty five million, you would be expecting at least at least second minimal, surely. So it's a lot of money. It it's is a lot, lot of money, pal. It's a lot of money not to get top six. Put it that way. It's a lot of money when your owner as well is throwing his toys out with a pram and, and not building mm. a new stadium because he couldn't get his uh, yeah. his way with the British government, put it that way. So mm. I was a little bit shocked to see that much faith placed in Lampard. Uh, what's, what's the equivalent of uh, for Liverpool for putting a, a like a legend that you wouldn't really want as a manager in? What, what would you say? Like someone like Ian Rush, for example, is an absolute legend, but he just gets the random manager's job that he's never really had experience in doing. Your, your heads would be explode, right? To be fair, he did relegate Cardiff and win the Norwegian title with Golden. So, um, surely that opens the range for the world's one of the world's most prestigious clubs to him. Surely he's definitely got the CV for that job. They are. I, I mean, you probably don't want to admit it because you are a Liverpool fan, but Man United are give or take the world's most prestigious club in the world of football. I don't understand why Oli got the job. I, I don't understand it. And a lot of United fans on social media are probably asking the same thing. And, and they've been Oli out for quite a while. It, it seems like no matter what he does, it's still Oli out. Even if they win, it's hashtag Oli out. I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. Cavani had been available from about June. Yeah. And they signed him on the last day. So no one's telling me that Cavani was the one they always wanted. Do you know what I mean? I got that, that wrong, by the way. I got that wrong. I said he wouldn't make it. I, I said that he wouldn't do anything. Yeah. I was the same. I got way. it wrong. I got it wrong. Yeah. But sometimes it happens, right? Like Falcal flopped, but then yeah. when they bring in like Henrik Larson, that yeah. works. Yeah, you know, even Diego Forlan. Works. Diego Forlan. Yeah. And he didn't really make his mark. Yeah. You know? um, so so obviously um there's a, there's an issue there, like obviously going after Sancho all that time and then um bringing in uh, you know a left back. It's clear for me they need someone to partner Maguire. They're not ever gonna take that that <laughs> They, sorry, they need sorry. someone with a bit of pace to play alongside Maguire, I think. Um, I think <laughs> Stop saying enough. his name, you're tickling me. <laughs> <laughs> 80 million um, pounds. Cheers, lads. I know, I know. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, but they're not going to take that hit either. They're not going to... I don't think Man United are going to say, Do you know, let's let's take our medicine and say we got that one wrong. They've made him captain of the club. They paid 80 million for him. He's here to stay, whether, whether or not Man United fans like it or not. They just need someone to play alongside him. Um, as for Oli, though, like, again, like you say, when 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 the onus is on Oli Gunnar Solskjaer to be the aggressor, to be the man that needs to break down teams, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's found I think, one. I think it's fair to say he does deserve credit. You know, he mm. deserves credit for clawing their way back into this yeah. title race. Yeah. Now, I can't have this conversation around managers, Lee and Joe, without... I'll come to you firstly, having a conversation around Jurgen Klopp and then we'll move on to Pep Guardiola. So it's easy for me to see here and I've, I've often vented my frustrations around certain things with Klopp. But from the outside, Lee, what would your assessment be of this season with Jurgen Klopp? Well, you mentioned Pep. Is he playing mind games? Because he, he said that he was out of the Premier League title race. They're not out of it. 
by, by no longs. No long shot. They're, they're not out of it yet. Um, but Klopp, I mean, they're still top and they've lost arguably the best defender in the world, the best centre back in the world, and they've lost him. Which it's is not the world's point. most expensive, though, Lee. It's very important that we get that. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case people are moving on to that again, 80 million pounds. Harry Maguire is, is the world's most expensive defender. That's another shot. <laughs> We, we're going to get him legless, Joe, by the end of this. Just know, keep right? yeah, I, have you seen what Leicester built on that Maguire money? Did you see what they built down the road on the A46? Have you actually seen it? The £100 million training facility. Go, you go, just search it up, Leicester training facility. Go and have a look. Maguire money has built a future for the club. <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. Uh, look, I'll tell you what. I've always given credit to, to your owners, by the way. Lee, oh. Leicester City's owners have... We'll move on to that a little bit later, but I just want to get that out there. They are owners that always, to me, listen to the fans and have the, the club's best interests at heart. Wow. I will say that. Unreal. But just on Klopp only, what's your assessment this season with the injuries he's faced, with the fixture pile up? Honestly, don't hold back, man. If you think, I think he's, you know, at times left it too late to make subs. I think he's no plan B at times. That's my assessment. Uh, yeah, but it's difficult to have a plan B when you've got no flipping, you've not got as many players left because of injuries and COVID and God knows what else is going to come our way. Um, but I, I mean, I, I've not watched lots of Liverpool matches. I'll be honest with you. I've, I've tr stayed truthful to watching mostly lesser stuff and the highlights and, and whatnot around the Premier League. Um, so I, I can't give you a 90 minute assessment on Liverpool. But from what I've seen... They're still going about their way, attacking fluid down, especially that left side. Scary. I, I, I'm fritted to death of watching Liverpool down that left side. Uh, Robson and Mane, I'm scared to death of. And and Klopp seems to like playing fast stars down the wings uh, and, and cutting in. Salah has been off lately. I, I hope you agree with me. Salah has been quite off lately. I don't know. Oh, who... prepare yourself for the avalanche that's coming your way, mate. He avalanche. Has that. I'm just a neutral. Not allowed, right? You're not allowed. Neutral, not allowed to be critical of Salah. It's not allowed. It's against the law, apparently. I, I tried right. it once and didn't get away it, with it. it. All right. I, I'll turn it around before I get slated. He's a, he's a magician. He's an Egyptian magician. You can have that. Um, but he's not been the Salah that we know. I think that's a fair assessment. Um, people will still come back and say that he's Liverpool's highest goal scorer this season. And, yeah. and he is. Yeah. Um, I think... For me, before I come to Joe and his take on Klopp, for me, if you're talking about Salah, you've got to be talking about somebody that's holding themselves to the standards of a Messi, of a Ronaldo, that wants to be up there mentioned with the real, real greats. And if for me, you've got to be doing it week in and week out to be up there at that level. Now, Mohamed Salah never asked himself to be put up on this pedestal. He's played himself into this position with yeah. a couple of magnificent seasons at Liverpool. And uh, like everybody else, I'm, I'm fine about a dip in form. But, but Joe, to you, Klopp from the outside, coming from a club that has a manager that I hold in absolutely high esteem and BL, so I think he's a genius. Top of my head. But while you were on Pep, just to finish up on the managers, how do we think he's performing this season, Lee? Is he trying to go under the radar a little bit? Yeah, under the radar. Uh, didn't they start with a, a game in hand because they didn't play? Is that right? A bit like Man United. Yeah. And uh, and the, I think they've both played that out really well and, and stayed under the radar. Uh, they, they've sort of just been creeping up, haven't they? And now we're at this point, like near nearer to the middle end of January, and they're, they're both there. It, it's a it's a weird one, Craig. It's a weird one. They've both acted like that, and I, I didn't even see I didn't even see Man United come in until all of a sudden, bang. They were, sorry, joint top. The, the, the chat is saying, <laughs> by the way, it joint was Manchester City. Of, joint top of seven. That did it last. And how we missed that. I, we should be all ashamed of ourselves, lads. How we missed the City yes. one. They, they were the last one to go back to back. Oh, okay. Of course. Yeah, of course. Man City. Yeah, but I think that's because we, I don't know, Man City, man. It's a, they're a new new club. I'll tell you really. what it's because of. It's because Ian Acho is a cunt. That's what it's because <laughs> of, mate. That's that's exactly what it was. Ian Acho, absolutely. I'm oh, true. I'm going. Oh, I'm don't stop, stop me on him. Please don't stop me on him because he's, he, you believe it or not, he's our top goal scorer in Europe right now this season. And every goal and stuff he's played, he scored is it's just like, it's almost like he tumbles over and the ball ends up in the net. He's dog awful. I, I don't know how we bought him for 25 million. Man City's seen as coming. I don't rate him. We need a striker desperately. Desperately need a striker because Jamie Vardy's 34 today and he's only getting older and older. We need a it. joke for you, Pep. Yeah, Pep. I mean, I rate obviously. I rate him like um, he's a he's a top quality coach. Uh, I did think, to be fair, that City would go big in the transfer market this summer, just due to the fact of 
you know, even before the season started, I did fancy <coughs> City because I just thought they would go big in the transfer market. They didn't quite do that. Um, obviously, there's a real issue with the striker situation. You've had Aguero and Jesus injured out at the start of the season and he was playing um, Sterling there, Mares there, you know, trying different different people in the false nine. But they do seem to have, have, have turned a corner recently, picked up some really good results and playing some scintillating stuff again, you know. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Um, and, and and the fact that he's 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 not brought Laporte back straight back right. in of late as well and just kept faith with Stones and Diaz at the back. Diaz, and, it, Diaz yeah, they've been, been great. great. Diaz yeah. has been a great buy. How much, um, was he, how much he cost? Sixty odd million though. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but he's it, it, it's been a great buy. When I when I spoke about them throwing the checkbook at it. I was expecting a, a Chelsea-style thing to try and grip that title back. It will be interesting to see what City do in January. If not, in the summer, will they go for Haaland? Will they go for Kane? It's the miss Because I think Aguero is going to go back to his homeland of Argentina more than likely uh, soon. So I think his time in the Premier League is coming to an end. So the next piece of the jigsaw for, for City is that striker. and Maybe they'll get one in January. And if they do, then you'd have to think, yeah, mm. it, it, it's going to be even more tougher for them what it is currently for Liverpool if they went out and spent big in, in January. 